Hi, I'm Holly. I'm a primary mental health worker for the West team. I'm here to talk you through some of the slides, coronavirus, the three C's, caring, coping, challenging. Coronavirus, the three C's, challenges, coping and caring. Young people and children have experienced a huge change in their lifestyle since the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of the activities, friendships and experiences that young people rely on to keep them mentally healthy have been more difficult for them to do at these times. Many families have reported that everything including sleep routines, eating, mood and motivation have been disrupted and even the most active of children and young people have struggled to maintain a lifestyle that supports their mental well-being. In fact, we have heard many families report that children and young people have struggled to connect to the meaning of their life and have had thoughts that their life is not worth living. Even younger children of primary school age can at times express that they are distressed and that they have a problem that they need support to solve by saying that they wish that they were dead or that they don't want to be alive anymore. It is important that we recognise this as an expression of distress, perhaps feeling hopeless and anxious, rather than an intention of that child or young person to end their life. Fight or flight. The body's reaction to fear is called the fight or flight response and people have had it since the beginning of time. Thousands of years ago, cavemen or cavewomen came face to face with a number of animals that were ready to eat them, such as the saber-toothed tiger. At this point, they could do one of two things, either run for it, that's flight, or pick up a spear and battle with the tiger, that's fight. Doing nothing wasn't an option, unless they wanted to be eaten. Our internal alarm system. When we are anxious, our fight or flight response causes changes in our body. To prepare for the fight or flight, our body produces adrenaline, which has many effects on the body, such as your heart beats faster, your breathing becomes faster, and your entire body becomes tense and ready to take action. Social context is important. A child's response to COVID-19 is likely to be influenced by others around them. Anyone can be influenced by social media and the news. Young people often look to the adults around them to make them feel safe. If these adults are showing signs of anxiety, the young person will also feel anxious. There needs to be a balance of recognising the dangers, but to also be mindful of not overreacting. Situations which might trigger negative thoughts. A social event, example, meeting friends, will I be able to do other school activities? Going back to school, what will the classroom look like? Will I have to wear a mask? Becoming ill in the future, will the virus return? The unknown future, what if? Signs of anxiety. Thoughts, physical feelings, behaviour. Our thoughts will affect how we feel and what we then might do. For example, we might think, I'm worried that I'll catch COVID-19 if I leave my house. This may cause us to feel sad, worried and maybe have some physical symptoms like a stomach ache and a fast heartbeat. We might then choose to stay under the covers in our bedroom rather than go for a nice walk in the sunshine. This might then make us feel low in mood. It can be helpful to think about what thoughts they may be having. We have more information on anxiety on our website which you may want to take a look at. You could also look at our anxiety workbook which has activities to help you understand your response to worry. Safety seeking behaviours are behaviours that you develop in response to feeling threatened. They help you in the short term to reduce the levels of anxiety that you are experiencing. We can all revert to old ways of coping and surviving in times of stress and trauma. Trauma makes us feel unsafe, so safety seeking behaviours are ways that we start to feel safer and more in control. They are not always helpful or acceptable to others. Some of these include more reactive behaviours such as being threatening, aggressive, intimidating, punitive or seductive, also paranoid and menacing behaviours. The more extreme, the more unsafe the child is feeling. Also, hyperactive and heightened behaviours can be common and big displays of emotion. Some avoidant behaviours, such as being overly self-sufficient, not feeling emotions and being overly rational, compulsive, caregiving or promiscuity and other risk-taking behaviours or ones that dampen experiences such as drink or drugs in adolescents or sugar in children. Some dampening happens naturally, zoning out, feelings of not being real. These are quite normal in the short term when following a traumatic experience and should be managed by compassionate and thoughtful caregiving. When does anxiety become a problem? Recovering from lockdown. As we come out of lockdown, it is normal to feel anxious for a period of time. However, the anxiety should ease gradually and if it worsens or becomes a long-term difficulty, then it becomes a cause for concern. We would expect anxiety to keep showing up for some time after lockdown has ended. 
The more we do things we enjoy, the more anxiety will ease. Anxiety becomes a problem when it keeps getting in the way of doing what you need to do and what you need to do. Going to school, going to a party with your friends. However, problems can stick around because of how we think, feel and behave. It can maintain the original anxiety. Our thoughts, feelings and behaviours can be maintained by reactions of others around us. Anxiety can make you feel ill and it can prevent you from sleeping. Anxiety can make you do things you do not want to do, counting things or repeating tasks. Hot cross bun model of anxiety. We have mentioned before that our thoughts can affect our feelings and behaviours. Sometimes we can keep fears going because of the thoughts we might have. For example, we might think, I'm worried that if I go out I'll catch COVID-19. This may cause us to feel anxious, worried and maybe have some physical symptoms from a stomach ache or a fast heartbeat. We then choose to stay in our bedroom and watch the news. This then might make us feel even more anxious and sad. What can you do about it? The things that these children and young people may need help with could be having an adult to talk these things through with, ensuring self-care, sleep, eat, balance of rest and activity, being active and involved, especially when it involves movement and being outdoors, feeling as if they are achieving and have a purpose, especially when it involves giving to others, such as animal care or care for relatives. Connecting with others and with things that they are grateful for. If you have these concerns, please access some of the resources on the website, such as Coping Box, the A to Z Coping. We also have more information on anxiety on our website, which you may like to take a look at. You can also look at our anxiety workbook, which has activities to help you understand your response to worry. Supporting through signs of trauma, compassionate, communication, playfulness, acceptance, curiosity and empathy. It is really important to be compassionate of someone experiencing trauma as there can often be a lot of shame attached to the experience. Communicating in a combination of ways is really helpful. Playfulness. This means being playful in approach and using humour and light. Heartedness to take some of the heat out of the interactions, but not teasing. Being silly and playful is very important in developing trust and safety. Acceptance. Showing attentiveness and noticing how someone might be feeling can be very calming and containing and helps the brain regulate emotional intensity. Curiosity. Thinking with a child or young person when they are calm about what might be behind their behaviour, such as, I wonder if it is easier to be angry than to be scared. Empathy. Ability to just be with someone in distress and not try to make it better or fix it. Not comparing an event to something worse or saying, at least. Being heard and understood and having our feelings acknowledged is so powerful. And then for a child to have an adult help them to make them feel better. A-N-D, firstly. Aware of sensations. Name the body's message and describe the feeling. So to recognise your child's feelings, Encourage your child to become aware and recognise their feelings. Test things out a little at a time. As you can see from the diagram, these things vary from how scary that they may feel. Pictures of people in shops, driving past the supermarket, walk past the local shop, go into the local shop, buy something from the local shop, go into the supermarket and buy something from the supermarket. It is important to remember that this can be changeable. What can you do to support someone with anxiety? Encouragement and praise for managing difficult situations. Encourage them to share their worries. Use rewards for achievement. Provide reflections to develop insight. I wonder if you're feeling worried about the party next week. Model facing fears or that a situation can be mastered. We know children learn from how others around them respond to situations. Normalise anxiety for them and reality checking. Identify the worry Encourage the young person to question its accuracy. Is it fact or is it fiction? What is the evidence for and against the thought? If always or never a part of the thought, are there times when it hasn't happened? Think of examples or alternative rational thoughts. What would they say to a friend with the same worry? There are many resources to help with this. Stress reduction. Completing breathing exercises helps override the body's stress response and allows our brain to think more and it brings our rational thinking back on track. There are many apps and websites with scripts to download. It is worth trying to see which one works for you. Remember, not everything will work for everyone. My child has additional needs, autism, ADHD or learning disability. 
Change and uncertainty can be very difficult for any child, particularly those with additional needs. It is natural for them to find this period of time difficult or to be anxious about what is happening. Your child might show their anxiety through their behaviour. You might see more meltdowns, more difficult behaviour, more disruption and more challenges, or more withdrawal, and this is normal. Try to see this as them communicating their natural distress rather than being naughty. Adults need to model resilience, coping and helpful behaviours. Adults need to make sure they have their own outlets for their concerns and anxieties. How you can help. Help them understand, plan and prepare. Children may not understand why people are wearing masks or PPE, socially distancing or not hugging. Support structure and routine. Make sure there is a good routine in daily life to provide consistency and security and sense of stability even when some things are uncertain. Establish simple and predictable rituals for meals, work, play and bed. Let your child know the plans for returning to school, seeing people, going out. Make sure they know what to expect. Explain what will be the same and what will be different. Explain what they need to do and what they can expect others to do. Be clear, concise, direct and factual. Choose a time when they are calm. You may need to go over it many times. Use pictures, videos, books, drawings, social stories, information from school. This will all help to support this. Use diaries, visual timetables, calendars, pictures, now and next cards to let them know what to expect and when. Reintroduce routine before any changes are required so there is a gradual change in waking and bedtimes. Morning and evening routines, including getting dressed, preparing items for school in the morning and evening, regular meal times, schoolwork, chores, moving away from activities like screen time. Do not expect to make changes all at once. Your child may need a graded introduction back into new routines, school or other activities to support them to manage any anxiety. Use timers, prompts or whatever works in your house to help transitions. Use praise and reward frequently. Look for, notice and comment on the good things. Your child may need more regular scheduled breaks or time away from demands. This includes tasks but also social or communication demands. This may be during the day when establishing new routines as well as after activities or new different situations. Think about how these will be achieved at school and at home. For some children, this may mean time on their own, maybe doing a quiet favourite activity in a quiet space on their own. Children with ADHD may need to be busy or be doing physical activities. Additional needs resources. We can start by looking at Hampshire CAMS, which has a variety of self-help resources, especially for young people with ADHD, autism or learning disabilities. We can then start to look at MENCAP, ADIS, and then preparing for going back to school which is also really helpful for children and young people with autism. Additional needs resources. We also have the National Autistic Society and Autism Hampshire. These services are really helpful for young people with autism, but also providing information for parents with children with autism. We also have BUILD, United Response and Challenging Behaviour. We also have some really helpful websites. Anxiety BC, Mood Juice, Young Minds, Get Self Help and the Hampshire CAMS website. There's also some really helpful books, Overcoming Your Child's Fears and Worries and What to Do When You Worry Too Much. There are also various apps that you can download which are available for the iPhone and for Android, such as Mindshift, Headspace, Self Help for Anxiety Management, Worry Box and Think Ninja. I really hope that you found that useful, although if you do need any further information please feel free to visit the Hampshire Cams website.